Let freedom ring. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Patriot Radio at its best. You're listening to The Sound of Freedom with your host, Ryan Brooks. Hour number two of The Sound of Freedom. Thank you for joining me on this uh, exciting ride, folks. This is the Orion Talk Radio Network, blasting out live, 72 countries around the world, 1650 a.m. in New York State. I'm your host, Ryan Brooks. Special hello out there to Popeye in the chat room, stirring it up out there with the listeners. Interesting discussion going on, to say the least. Now, during the break, it was accused that doing a radio show with Orion Talk Radio is a collectivist action in its own. So we're going to just talk a little bit about collectivism versus individual individualism, if you will, being an individual versus being part of the collective. And I want to play for everybody real quick. I want everyone to hear what collectivism sounds like, okay? This is only 56 seconds long, so it's going to be painful. But listen to the words that this sock puppet is saying. This is collectivism. We're going to break it down further, and then we're going to go back to the secession thing, all right? Here it is. This is a collectivist rant in front of our troops. Each of us is only here because somebody looked out for us. Not just our parents, but our neighbors and our communities and our houses of worship and our VFW halls. Each of us is here because we had a country that was willing to invest in things like community colleges and universities and scientific research and medicine, and caring for our veterans. Each of us is only here because somebody somewhere had our backs. This country exists because generations of Americans worked together, looked out for one another. Out of many, we are one. Those are the values we've got to return to. If we do, there's nothing this country cannot achieve. Did you get that, folks? Out of many, we are one. It's all for the greater good, right? You need to sacrifice for the greater good. The country needs you, the individual, to sacrifice for the betterment of all people. Collectivist governments have killed an estimated 2 million 62 excuse me 262 million of their own people collective governments collectivist governments have killed over 262 million of their own people and it was all for the sake of the proletariat the master race and especially the greater good none were done by countries based on individualism now i'm not up here saying anything about the greater good I'm not saying you need to join with a group. You, need to, you don't need to join with Orion because we're not fighting for the greater good. I'm doing this to express my views to try to help people who are trying to find the truth, who are looking to an alternative, alternative news, who are trying to expand their horizons, who want to have an outlet that they can send friends and family to, who are starting to see the light, so to say, who are starting to come around. To have an option out there so when people just realize the game is rigged and they want to start finding answers, that's where the sound of freedom comes in. I'm not here to tell you anything. I'm just trying to get some different views out there. And once again, I know it's like my favorite saying. I I need to stop saying that. (laughs) But we have the alternative media. We have people who are pointing out where things are wrong and it's so easy to do there's wrong everywhere behind every rock it's just sick to the core it is a cesspit the politics are corrupt the people are corrupt the corporations are corrupt we have been corrupted but the hidden enemy within our own truth movement it's within those people that offer hope within the system because they them and their organizations they profit from the funneling of your productive energies. They get your energies, your time, your money to fight the system, and they're in the system. You can't defeat the system from within. History has shown that. Gandhi didn't walk inside the system. He didn't defeat the system by being in it. He gave up on the system, and then look what he did. Same with Martin Luther King. 
from a historical perspective, look at Jesus. He walked way outside of the paradigm in those days, of the way of living in those days. And he accomplished much more. So if the solution must come of the opposite consciousness, like we talked about, the Albert Einstein quote, quote of the day, you cannot solve a problem with the same consciousness that created it. You must see the world anew. Collectivist action cannot fix a collectivist problem. And you heard our current uh, puppet in chief up there just spewing, just spewing collectivism. Out of many, we are one. You're not here today, military members, and there's a huge crowd of army soldiers around him. You aren't here today on your own. Well, you know what? If I was in that crowd, I'd be offended because I didn't go to community college that the community so graciously donated their money to or rather was forced to through their taxes to provide an indoctrination center. I didn't go to that through the, the genius of medicine or any of that nonsense. I'm here because I was born and because my family raised me. That's why I'm here. I'm not here because Big Brother and the state and the government and all the, the greater good cared for me and gave me all these things to be who I am. Changing the puppet does not change the collective cage. If the solution must come of the opposite consciousness, then no collective organization will bring about any real change over another collective's organization. Power will simply change hands. And I just am trying to do this, folks, because the secession movement, like I talked about in the first hour, it's on every news website. They're all talking about it. Alternative News is talking about it. We have the Hegelian dialectic going on. Either you're with it or you're not. That's it. But what's going to happen? It's going to get hyped up, hyped up. More people are going to jump on board, and then it's going to fall short. They divide us so they can conquer us. Watch Texas get another 100,000 signatures before December 9th, and the president comes out and says something that just pours gasoline on the fire and outrages people even more. I've said this many times. They want violence. They want violence. Now, I have a caller calling in here. So we are going to add this caller to the call. Area code 617. You are live on the Sound of Freedom. What do you have to say? Oh, yes. Uh, Ryan, how are you doing? This is Jeff from Chelsea, Massachusetts. And you know what? As far as collectivism is concerned, here's the way I look at it. The, the sheeple voted for Barack Hussein Obama. And you know what? This communism that's coming on this country... I believe, for the most part, it's too late. It has to run its course for a couple of generations so the people get sick of it. And then, and, and then, like the collapse of communist Russia, I mean, uh, the, uh, the American people will come up and restore this country, hopefully, after a couple of generations. I mean, you, you know, I, I, I really believe that, that, that um, we have hit the tipping point to, to where you have uh, 50% plus one, in the words of Jeff Cooner, that, that, that voted for Obama. The, the idiocracy has succeeded, and then what Obama will do is is uh, make his position much more solid, open up the gates so the foreign third world comes in, invade this country, rape this country. And I mean the foreign third world, like like Russia, China, the Middle right. East bloc, just come in, rape this country. And and, 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 the, and the people who, who had the idea, who had an inkling of what a republic was like, 16 over, they'll be killed off. And then you have the stupid young people. I mean, I, I mean that's just the way it is. Democracy's and, and destiny. It's a very uh, interesting point you brought up there, Jim, and I appreciate you calling in. No, uh, Jeff. And, you know, I, I agree with you to the extent that no amount of collective action is going to solve the problem. Because, you know, like you said, we had, you know, 50-plus or 60 million people who voted for Obama, and then the other 60 million voted for Romney. I mean, those people, even if we seceded, aren't going to change their ways. And I'm sure a lot of the people who voted to secede are just upset Romney people, you know? So what good is that? You know what I mean? I think you're right. My my note is, too, is that what you're going to wind up having is you're going to wind up having neo-Nazi camps, you're going to wind up having Black Panther camps, and you're going to have Muslim terrorist camps. In other words, you're going to have all these factions uh, uh, sprinkled all over the country, and, and and if you step into the wrong section, you're done. I mean, America will be like a big prison divided by race, ethnicity, and religion, and it will be a third world toilet. Uh, I'll let you go. Right, well, hey, and I thank you for Jeff, got to take a quick one. break, my friend, but thank you so much for calling in, folks. The Sound of Freedom on the Orion Talk Radio. We're going to be right back. Three minute break. Don't go away. <laughs> 